Hello and welcome back to Hold On I'm Talking Brother. My name is Joe Greenwood and you are listening to our review of UFC Fight Night Kansas City which was headlined by Max Holloway versus Arnold Allen in the featherweight division. A night of some absolutely tremendous finishes uh, capped with a, I think, superb featherweight battle between Arnold Allen and Max Holloway. As per usual, I'm joined by my regular co-host, Tom Ballam. And now, Tom, I can see you smirking. You picked Max Holloway by decision. I picked Arnold Allen by decision. But let's go straight into it. How'd you score it? Are we going to do round by round, Joe? We can go round by round if you want. But you could give overall score first, if you wish. Well, overall score, it's a whooping. An absolute whooping for me. No. Doubled him up for significant strikes. Won four of the five rounds. Max Holloway. Still blessed in a league of his own, apart from the god tier, which is Alexander Volkanovsky, sat atop the division in another universe. You take him away, Max is out there on his own. Well, you had it three, uh, four rounds to one. Yeah. I had it 3-2. Okay. Which, round, which round did you give to Arnold Allen? Because that's interesting. Well, I, I assume you can only really look at the second and the fifth as being potential Allen rounds. Yeah, so which one was the one for you? That I gave to Holloway? I gave Holloway the second round. Ah, interesting. So you actually follow the judges as well, where they gave Alan the fifth uh, as well. I gave Alan the second uh, purely on the uh, the damage of it. But we'll go into that further. Tom, you are squinting. Now, listen, Max Holloway by decision, that's about as classic as a result as you can get. But I've got to say, not a vintage performance from Max Holloway, a new performance from Max Holloway. Uh, working way on the outside, long range kicking game to yeah. the body and to the legs. It, it was new wrinkles, new wrinkles, new wrinkles in this old dog. But is he so old? He's thirty one, and that's what he wanted to show here, Joe. Uh, he was sick of all this veteran talk, future Hall of Famer, vintage. Can he roll back the years? Your man's thirty one years old, Joe, and he is looking just as good as ever. Still evolving. Now, Joe, what do you do if you take a beat down? like he himself took against Volkanovski, you go back to the drawing board. You look and you think about how you can implement new elements. And it certainly was a different Holloway. Very, very calculating, uh, controlled performance on the outside, as you say. And those kicks, Joe, Arnold Allen, at no point in this fight, had any answer to them. No, I, I was I was surprised, actually, as well, because I thought Max would be wanting to fight in boxing range a lot more. And I actually found that when they did go into boxing range and they were having close, tight exchanges, you know, I would say it was about 50-50 at points in terms of who came off better in some of them, but I thought more Holloway landing more from at range. So it was more that, like, he'd have, like, this really long, extended jab that would sort of... Um, as Allen was sort of moving laterally. So, like, Allen would normally have lateral moves to escape, and Holloway would land really lovely jabs from that sort of range. And then the kicking as well, to then reduce that lateral movement to keep Allen into a closer, tighter boxing range. Allen's success in this fight did come from when he actually blitzed. He would blitz occasionally, and it was just like he would land on, on Holloway. He would land big left hands. And it was going well for him. It's just he did it so infrequently. It was so infrequent from Arnold Allen. You know, and then it's like you just let rounds slip away and you can't go into a fifth round against Max Holloway being a round down. Like, if you need to finish him, you ain't going to finish him. No, certainly not. Uh, as highlighted by the commentary team, the man has taken 1,500 significant strikes in his UFC career. None of them have <laughs> dropped him, Joe. And he was not close to being dropped here. I didn't actually feel that Allen was really landing all that much. Like, you take the big moments for Allen, which came from that left overhand, which i got to say, that is a cannon joke. That's a huge weapon. It's so yeah. fast. It's so powerful. Um, but Max was able to roll with it most of the time. So the actual impact, it was more like the wrist, and Max was already turning away for the most part. Allen was landing, but he wasn't landing flush. He was landing flush, but maybe not as much as he could have. Like, th this is... This was the annoying... This was the annoying thing about it from Allen's perspective, is that, like... He had moments where it was just like he could have won more rounds, he could, but he just didn't implement it well, soon enough, or he didn't adjust to Max's game plan of the long-range kicking. And then you remember that, really, how many guys has Arnold Allen fought who has that sort of, like, kicking game? Do you know what I mean? Like, how many guys has he fought that actually implement that style? And the fact that Max Holloway broke that out, you know, it was a really interesting 
wrinkle that he added. Uh, I'm actually surprised we didn't see any wrestling from from Holloway as well, because there was practically no clinching in this fight either, which I thought could be an area where Alan could get some success. It just was never available to him. No, well, when Alan did wrap up some clinches, Max shucked him off pretty pretty quickly. Um, I didn't think Alan looked. I think the first. I think the first clinch exchange was in the fourth. Yeah. Like, just goes to show that, like, what range and pace this fight was fought at. Yeah. Um, I guess, you know, we did come away with slightly different takes when we're looking at it in that you felt that Alan had great success uh, when they were trading, you know, uh, trading not at range, but kind of in the pocket, as you say. Mm. Um, I, that, that, wasn't, that wasn't my take. I thought Max also bested Alan there for the most part, whereas you had it 50 50 is. Probably be more like 70, 70, 30 for me. I just, what was vintage about Max here was his measurement of the distance and his timing, which are truly just incredible. He's such yeah. a smart fighter. He's able to stand right there in danger and uh, kind of, uh, I'm missing the word. He's almost like looking down the barrel of the gun, and it's just not not phasing. But he at can all. See, he can see the bullet coming, Joe. He can see yeah. that bullet coming, and he knows when he can like get something down there to stop that shot coming. He can just pick that little that little jab. And we're talking about weapons that Alan struggled with. Max Holloway's jab in this fight, absolutely nonstop in Alan's face the whole fight, straight down the middle in between Alan's shots. Uh, really breaking his rhythm, just off. We, we talk about Volkanovski often, his kind of offbeat timing Yeah. when he lands his shots. Holloway was breaking up Alan all the time with these with these quick jabs and then stepping out the way when, uh, when Alan would try to fire back. Uh, not only that, but he would also blitz down the center off the back of his jab. Beautiful mm. stuff. Yeah, yeah, really, really impressive. It's... Um... And also, it was, it was interesting as well to see Max like not throw at such a high output as well. That like he was using his pace and tempo just to keep a steady rhythm throughout the fight instead of like slow build up and then escalate it further and further and further. It was like I'm just going to strike within this amount of strikes per round in this range, and then that's it. Like I'm not, I'm not going to like it, it was like I'd rather be at this consistent tempo. You know, it was it was it was that that was I thought was quite interesting because at no point did he ever escalate. Maybe he felt like he didn't want to get into that sort of exchange with Arnold Allen. Maybe that Volkanovski fight has maybe taught him a different way of like approaching fights. You know, if he is going to beat someone like Volkanovski, is it it's like slowing the pace of the fight down, like making it literally, you know, a strike for strike, you know, low output affair, you know, in the way that Makachev did. Well, uh, you're not going to like it, Joe, but my take on that is a little bit different. Uh, I sense it's going to upset you. Yeah. Uh, I-, I just think Holloway had Alan's measure from the starting bell. I thought he had extra gears to go to, but he never felt any need to go there. I-, I really just felt like he coasted. At no point was he in any in any danger. He was very comfortable. He looked at Alan, he saw what he had, and he just comfortably, comfortably beat him. Didn't need to find anything more. Didn't need to switch anything up. Um, I think in rounds three and four, that's when I was like most impressed by Max. Yeah, same. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think that he did step it up there, you know, and I think that that's what he did. Like, let's like even if we go on like a numeric standpoint, he did step up in those rounds. Like, if I'm remembering that correctly, like, well, I'll give you. Yeah, that, that was. Let me just give you some round by round stats. Uh, round one, it's 27 significant strikes counted for Holloway versus Allen's 11. I don't think anyone would ever be considering that a potential Allen round. No. I think when we thought about how the fight might unfold, that first round was kind of what we were looking at. Yeah. The second round, uh, Max outlined him 25 to 19. Not enough of that for to be a significant round winner for me. Again, though, I still gave it to Alan on that just for the quality of strikes that he landed in that in that round. Yeah, I mean, and, there, there was the yeah. big impact. There was the big overhand left, and I think he did have a, a right hand too. But, but again, that though, just two small moments in a sea of Max Holloway uh, controlling again, though, but, the fight. But this is the problem, though, isn't this, with the scoring criteria? And we can go into this with like it, when it comes to like grappling exchange as well, is that we score it on damage, you know. And it's like I, I also gave that round to Holloway on damage. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Rounds yeah. three and four, I don't think there's any debate, and we can also see that in the numbers. Thirty-three to fourteen for Holloway, twenty-nine to twelve 
yeah. for Holloway. Comprehensive. Comprehensive. Round five is the interesting one. Because uh, why did you give that one to Arnold Allen? Uh, I guess like he was pressing the action and he was coming in on those blitzes. To give it to Allen though, I do have to overlook one thing, and that is it hasn't been scored for Holloway. But when they kind of let it all hang out, Holloway versus Ricardo Lama style in yes. the last ten seconds. I mean, Ho- Holloway did drop him. That, that that did happen. Yeah, I could. I I got. I get that, but I can't ignore the previous four minutes and fifty eight seconds of a round. Which, you know I mean? did you see that as a, say, did you score that to Allen with the same strength that you did round three and four for Holloway? Uh, maybe not quite, but I, I was more pretty than round one for Holloway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I was more in line with like thinking that Allen should... That, my main frustration with that round was that I think that Allen should have just fought the whole fight like that in a way. like, And I think he could have done it. You know, it, it seems... I, I don't know, but yeah, I, I gave it to him based off of the the work and the pressure and the damage that he inflicted in that round. I think well, he had co- I think he had control of that round as well compared to the way that Max had control of rounds one, three, and four. Oh, yeah, not to the same degree, oh. but I mean, like in terms of the narrative of that round. Just when I thought we were getting a consensus, yeah, the narrative, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sorry, that's, that's, that's the... a terminology I can sign up to. That, that <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. That. <laughs> if, if you think about like you know, if you think about the story of the fight, yeah compared to the actual fight right yeah it fits within that story so I, i'm happy to go with that joe i mean going yeah. into that fifth uh alan knew he was down alan's yeah, yeah, corner for, sure. for Zahabi. he let him know he needed a finish and alan's response was okay right dan hooker round five one one three i he's yeah. gonna go out there he's gonna land a, a double jab and he's gonna come with a big left and, uh, and blitz in, unleash yeah. those hooks. And that's exactly what we saw in the first minute. Had Max on his bike a bit. Um, but, you know, the rest of the round didn't really play out like that. It was an Allen round. Uh, yeah. It was, It was. do you know what it was? Was that Allen won that first minute. Holloway was just like, no, 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 no. I'm going to keep moving. I'm going to keep throwing these long range kicks. And in the last 30 seconds, they kind of like, all right, let's just sit down and throw some punches and see what happens. And then Holloway dropped him uh, with, like, one second to go. And I was just like, man, like, would it have been better if Alan had just continued to just charge in like that? And even if he got finished, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Like, you know. Well, it sounds like we're naturally coming on to what this means for both fighters. Uh, I, mean, I mean, it means it means nothing for Holloway, in well, a way. You know what, Joe? I think it means nothing for Alan. Now, and that as well, yes. L- yeah, let me try to let me try to kind of articulate why I feel like that and see if we're on the same page there. I mean, a win would have been huge. Yes. I mean, absolutely huge. That would be, oh my God, we've got another one from the UK yeah. and he's here and he's ready right now. For me, because that's the esteem that I hold Holloway in. And yeah. you can see why I hold Holloway in that esteem after this performance. Um, but a loss... For me, it just confirms where I see Arnold Allen. And that's a man who's still developing. He's in the top five and he's got years to go. He's got improvements that he can make. And that I'm not going to say that he belongs at the very top tier, but that he could. Yeah, I, I... Yeah, it's kind of the same position where I thought of like Yair Rodriguez after he fought Max. Where it's just like, he lost that fight and then... One fight later, he's fighting for the interim title. I'm like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. And it's like, I honestly think that like, it's, he's Max is one of these weird cases where like you can lose to him and still be like well within the top five, well within title contention. You know, look at Brian Ortega. Gets absolute. Like, I mean, one of the all time great beatings. And to be honest, in a way, I think worse than the Calvin Cater beating that oh. Max handed out. Like, I think it was. You know, Max styled on Cater. Max destroyed Ortega. Like, it was, you know... I mean, the fight got finished. Um, but I then mean, Ortega, do we Ortega do feel- beat Zombie, and then he goes into a title fight. So, you know... I think we probably... I, I haven't confirmed this with you, but the Cater fight... Yeah. It could have been stopped. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The corner should have stopped. Was it necessary for Cater yeah. to, to, to take an extra 200 strikes or whatever? Yeah. Um... Just reiterating, 750 strikes landed for Max. In, in a career where he is the distance leader for significant strikes landed, even more so after uh, last night. Can I... Um, Some 3,000 to... strikes, Joe, in Max's Madness. long, long career. 750 of them against Calvin Cater. Oh, my God. 
that's just a madness. That's an absolute madness. madness. It's a madness. Now let's talk about the future. Max has called for Korean Zombie in Australia later this year, which is I think you know what, man. Like if Zombie's going to go out and he's going to go out on another historic beating, then so be it. I love the Zombie, you know. And if his last two fights are Volkanovski and Holloway, like it's, it's he was still, I guess somewhat competing against these guys. I mean, Zombie has no chance against Max Holloway. I think his style just does not line up at all for Max Holloway. Um, personally, Tom, I'll reveal who I think Max Holloway should face next. And it was the winner of the co-main event, Edson Barbosa. Uh, well, we have to talk about that fight uh, before we, we before we match make. And we're going to come on to it. Arnold Allen, what do you think? I think Alan, he's just right there. He fights other top contenders. Joe, this is what I was trying to say in the preview. Uh, he hasn't actually established himself yet in the, mm. with, with the top guys. He hasn't fought. Let, let me just give you a, a roll call of the current top five. We've got Yaya Rodriguez. We know he's going to fight Volkanovski when the belt becomes available. Brian Ortega. Yeah, that's the fight really, isn't it? Alan versus Ortega. Given that Josh Emmett at rank five, he's already been matched up. With Ilya Taporia for a main event in Jacksonville. In soon, soon to be in the top five. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, and those are the guys. Calvin Cater, unfortunately, with the knee injury against Allen last time out. That's a fight that could happen in the future. Cater probably takes one more and then he's ready for it. And then after that, Joe, it's whether Taporia and Evloev, are they coming or not? Outside of that, I don't really see anybody emerging in, in the division. Fair enough. I mean, fair Max enough. Holloway... I, I just, I mean, Chan Sun Jung, he is like a sore thumb when I look at these rankings. Rank six, Joe. Yeah, it's, it's an odd one, isn't it? it? It's the sort of Dominic Cruz in the bantamweight division sort of ranking, isn't it? Where it's just like, are they going to give him the nice fight to go out on, you know, against another veteran? Or are they going to let him get pummeled by a top star who needs a win or a hot prospect well, who needs a win? this is just it, though. Where is Max? Where is he in those labels? He does not want to be seen as some veteran, uh, some future Hall of Famer. He yeah. wants to be recognised for who he is right now. And I, what do you want the man to do after a performance like that over a guy that you said is going to win the belt next? Yeah, I mean, I honestly think that he shouldn't fight top contenders. I think he should be put in there with guys like Edson Barbosa. <laughs> like, that's what I would want. Like, if I saw Holloway versus Barbosa, and it's for the July card, I'd be like, oh, give me some of that. Yes, please, madam. Like, you know, a bit of saucy violence. Nice, like, three-round affair. You know what I mean? Max just outpaces Edson for, like, three rounds, but Edson lands some huge kicks. Like, I would be well up for that, man. I'd be well up for that. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun, actually, Joe. I mean, Max is here to stay, and let's just celebrate that moment. Volkanovski has obviously closed the chapter on their rivalry, but if he goes up, who, who are you picking for the belt two years from now? I, I, don't, I just don't see what's going to happen to Max Holloway in that time. People are talking about him being so weathered, you know, taking so much damage. He just looked fantastic on Saturday night. Yeah, I think we need to see what some of these... Well, when I say what some of these... Tapuria and Evloev, yeah. like if they can get into those positions, because those are guys who have like who have heavy wrestling games. They got very good top pressure. Mm. You know, they are bulls basically. There's like two, you know, rams going at it. And when was the last time Max faced like a pure wrestler? Like ever? Like when? Actually, I can't even remember the last time he fought like a pure wrestler. Did, did he have a Chad Mendes matchup in there? No. No. Right. Uh, Frankie Edgar, you know, that I guess maybe that, Chelsea Aldo, Jeremy Stevens, Charles Oliveira, Cub Swanson, Clay Collard, yeah. like n no one really, like yeah. he's, he's he's not really had that. Yeah, so, interesting how these divisions unfold, you know, where like you have to run the gauntlet of wrestlers at, at 170. Uh, yes. And, and yet 145 is strangely devoid of them. Absolutely, those are the guys to watch and we're going to find out, Joe. We're going to find yeah. on Saturday night. We're going to find out. Yeah, we will find to, out. To quote a certain Max Holloway. But I, yeah. I loved it, Joe. Just to sign off on that fight. I loved it. I mean, yeah. are you eating a bit of humble pie? Can, is, there, is that what's cooking no. in the background? No, why, why would I do that? Hold on. If anything, I should be bragging of like my tactical nose, like, which has been on display quite a lot recently. So thank you, Tom. <laughs> did I or did I not say Max should implement a long-range kicking game? You did. 
That's all. That, again, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Is that <laughs> forget I the rest. Okay. Yeah, forget the rest. That's all that matters. Like again, this is the weird thing with like fighting and when you like fighters or whatever else is like. I mean, we've got a podcast that is in, named in honor of Tony Ferguson. We love Tony Ferguson, right? Preach. But you know, when he loses to like, or when he lost to Gaethje or whatever else, Charles Oliveira, like I was a bit sad, but I was also a bit like, man, Justin Gaethje, man, Charles Oliveira. That's what got me hyped. Yeah, you know? it's it's props to the winner, props to the one who can innovate, props to the one who's pushing on, and and props to the loser as well. We love all these guys, Joe. Of course. Also, I hate it when people like someone when like Arnold Allen loses this fight. People go like. I told you he was shit. He was never good. Whatever else. And then, so basically what you've just said is Max Holloway just beat shit. Like, Max Holloway beat someone who wasn't good. So then that's not worth anything. These guys are, like, so skilled and so talented to be at this level. Yeah, you know. I'm, I'm excited for the future for Arnold Allen, despite this yeah. loss. I, I just, I, I think it could be a good thing for him, ultimately. Um, Agreed. Yeah, Agreed. now, Joe, let's talk about something that I was wrong about. Yeah, I was wrong as well. <laughs> well, I think I led the dance there, and I'm going to own up to it, and I'm going to tell you I thought Edson Barbosa might be washed. And mm. I watched the first few minutes of this fight, and I and I kind of felt quite similar mm. that uh, yeah, he does, he, he's looking a bit looking a bit off, strange yeah. discoloration. I think this I think this weight cut is really getting to him. That must suck cutting all that weight for Edson mm. at that age. Uh, Billy Quantillo, very much the usual style. In your face, yeah. but Edson was landing, Joe. He 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 was landing. How long could he do that for? Not that long. <laughs> not that long. He did not need to because Billy Quarantello obliged him in a most sublime fashion. Yeah. Now, just walk us through how this fight came to a conclusion. Well, what happened was was that Quarantello. As I said in the preview, is that he has to be all the way in or all the way out. And he consistently found himself not all either place. He found himself in the middle. And that's what happened with the finish here. Because Quarantillo was striking to get into wrestling exchanges. So he would punch and then go for the takedown from there. What Quarantillo really needed to do is he needed to try and back him up there, up against the fence, get into a clinch exchange and then work to a takedown from there. So what happened was Quarantillo goes charging in. He, lands, he throws a right kick to the body with a right hand behind it. Edson sort of catches the kick, doesn't really land. Right hand comes up. Edson puts his both hands out. And Quarantillo ducks down for a takedown onto Edson's right leg. And as he does that, Edson sends it flying up into the air. Flush onto Quarantillo's chin. Knocking him down and knocking him out. One piece of ground and pound ref steps in Edson Barbosa wins by knockout in the first round it was a hellacious finish now we talked about Edson vintage Joe that was that was one for the one for the fans right there it was it was just fantastic yeah Uh, but what was uh, equally fantastic was uh, Billy Quarantillo, hands in the air, protesting the stoppage. How could you do this to me, ref? Yeah. <laughs> How could you do this? I'm yeah. fine. Uh, no, mate. You've just been face down on the mat. Uh, everyone has has seen it. I'm just watching the finish again. Quarantillo, he throws the kick and he throws the punch. and, his, and his It lands. Pu- the, the right hand lands, but that, Edson's that- already expecting him to duck in. Yeah, but the, the thing is, is that he's throwing the punch with his right foot still up in the air from the kick. <laughs> Like it, it's it's it was he was just he was on one leg as well. Like basically, then, so he's fall, he's almost falling into the single leg that he ends up reaching for. Yeah, and he's and he's having to go across Edson's body as well to get to that leg, rather than going for the near leg, the left leg, which might have been well, it would have been safer. Um, which lets Edson get that kind of full torque, the full range on the knee. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, you know, okay, Billy obliged him. For sure. And we suspected, you mentioned in the pre-fight breakdown, this could be a great matchup for Edson. Uh, I want to say thank you, Bill and Quarantillo. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for that moment. It was, it was just fantastic. Uh, put it in your highlight reel. Mm. And then you get to watch the old, the other knockouts. You get to see what Edson's done. And he remember he did that to Benil Dariush. Yeah, man. What a story this man's had in, in the UFC. And he's not done yet. So no. Not at all. But you'd you'd watch him versus Max. <laughs> Come on, man, you would. Yeah, you would. Yeah, yeah. Of course, of course, I would. I mean, basically, I think it should be banned. T- 
totally banned for him to fight any bearded men from the Caucasus <laughs> <laughs> for his remaining fights in the UFC. And if you've ever trained wrestling, you're also out. Right. Uh, now, okay, if you've been to the same school as Billy, that's fine. But if you, I mean, if you're like a pressure wrestler in the truest, purest form, your man, he's been there. We know how that ends. What yeah, I want exactly. is men who will oblige him. So if they want to make the rematch, Billy Quarantillo, Edson Barbosa too, I'm down for it. What about uh, Edson versus Calvin Cater? Oof. The thing is, that I like Edson, Joe. I like him. And when you say that, I don't like what's going to happen in that fight mm. for him. Fair enough. Uh, Tom, should we... <laughs> the rest of this card... Um, don't really want to talk about Mazzucano versus Jacoby. I don't really have much to say about that. Do you have anything on that? Well, M- Mazzucano uh, banks another win. Still undefeated. Yeah, I guess is, so. Yeah. Is, he, is he going anywhere? No, he's just terrible. <laughs> but it's light heavyweight, so... What am I supposed to say? Like, you know, I, I don't... I, I think his striking is very sloppy. Like I, I just and you know I think that says something about Jacoby as well. Like Justin Jacoby, he was a Glory kickboxer. You know they always say that. Yeah, look at the people he beat in Glory. They're all Americans. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that tells you something about Dustin Jacoby's kickboxing. So, you know, it's like when people bring up Andrew Tate and they're like, he was a kickboxing world champion. It's like, bruv, I could become a kickboxing world champion in about six months. So, leave it. Yeah. Right. Um, let's. Uh... Andrew Tate, Joe Greenwood confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Anyway, uh, your boy Ion Kutilaba beat uh, Tana Bosa. Um, this was about as classic Eon as it gets, wasn't it? Like this was vintage Eon. This was another vintage display. One for one for the fans, Joe. Then just like uncontrolled roaring in the post-fight press conference. Well, in, yeah. when he was interviewed. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I loved watching Eon in this state. You know, give him another slop fest fight. Absolutely. That's what he's there for, Joe. And, you know, like, he deserves to be on main cards in Fight Nights. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> you just get him in there, Joe. Wow. Just stick him on. What's the, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Uh, faint, pra- praising with, like, faint glory or whatever. What's, you know, what's the phrase I'm looking for? Yeah. 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 Get you in there against Da and Jung, mate. Come on. Uh, let's. Uh... Oh, this one, this was interesting. Pedro Munoz defeats Chris Gutierrez by unanimous decision. Um,. Man, Munoz, he's, st- he's still got the sauce, hasn't he? He's still got that magic sauce, hasn't he? He is. He's the man. Like, we love Pedro Munoz. Blitz Chris Gutierrez. Gutierrez's kicking game was not on point. Gutierrez was not at it at all in this fight. And Munoz uh, pressured him, made him suffer. I'm, d- I'm sorry, but the fans booing and whistling during this, you're dickheads, and I don't like you. Yeah, definitely with you on that, Joe. No, it was it was great. All praise to Pedro Munoz. I think Gutierrez is... is uh... Still fainting backstage, still threatening to spin. <laughs> um, I think that might just be his normal walk, perhaps, because yeah. there's a whole lot of that, Joe, and not much else. He is he is slick and smooth, but the kind of fundamentals of the game, Pedro showed him. Now, Pedro, he's a problem. He's an interesting guy to throw at people because, obviously, we know he's got a granite chin. He yeah. hits hard, and he marches forward. What yeah. more do you need as a yeah, fan? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, Pedro Munoz... He's kind of he's, I don't know, man. Like Pedro Munoz, Rob Font. He's Pedro... he's he's still there. He showed that. He showed that. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. Like Chris Gutierrez was shown to be not on the level of Pedro Munoz. Pedro Munoz is still a top ten bantamweight for me. Like I think that's fair. Um, you know. Oh, well, he's already fought Rob Font and he's beaten him, so maybe not Rob Font. Uh, I don't. Got out my mind. What about maybe Marlon Vera? Wow. Okay. Could do. I mean, that is, we, we've been talking about these divisions within the division. Yeah. And Marlon Vera formerly belonged to a higher division. But, of course, he did have pretty comprehensive loss to Corey Sandhagen. Perhaps he's ducked down. Mm. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm there for it. I, I think Munoz. there are lots of great matches. I prefer, though, let me say this, Joe. I prefer Munoz in the uh, kind of, I don't want to use the word gatekeeper because that sounds dismissive. Yeah. But it's like... Okay, so you, so you, so you you know so you think you're hot shit? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't yeah, be yeah, yeah. your son, and then we'll talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, I don't know, like Yanez. Would you watch Yanez Munoz? Yeah, it would have been someone like Yanez, of course, if he hadn't had already. Javid Basharat. 
Yeah, guys, guys like this. I mean, Jonathan Martinez, for example. Yeah, that's that's a good show. That's a good show. I think um, Martinez would be a good one. I think the thing that interests me about Vera though is that like Vera is obviously very low output and like needs the guy to come onto him, and Munoz will do that. However, Munoz is a great game planner and actually does stick to his game plan, which you know a lot of fighters do not do. Um, so I think he could be a really interesting matchup for that. But yeah, actually, you know what? Jonathan Martinez, that'd be a nice one to see. I'd, I'd like to see that. And Chris Gutierrez is definitely a setback, but I don't think... I think we're, you're a little bit strong in saying that they're not on the same level. I think Gu- Gutierrez could be there. Yeah. I think he was going to have regrets about that fight because there are certainly things he could change and, and with those changes, make a change in the outcome. Uh, I mean, Munoz just showed, just sit down on some of your punches and then, you know, actually inflict some damage and you'll win rounds. It's like, like old school, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's really... It's, <laughs> so it's old school fighting of damaging the opponent, yeah. Exactly. Enough of this uh, fancy stuff. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rafa Garcia defeats Clay Guida by unanimous decision. Who cares? Uh, now, this. Sorry. The two uh, prelim uh, main main events. So the, the co-main and the main of the prelims. Bill Algeo defeats TJ Brown by rear naked choke. Oh, pure violence all the time. Just yeah. like blood from multiple orifices, it was just <laughs> full they octane. Were just, they were smacking each other around. I mean, T.J. Brown's striking was really lovely. Lovely straight shots coming down the middle. Algio coming around the outside. Um, but the rear naked choke coming from Algio. I mean, it was well, it's, slick. It, it certainly was. But we have to talk about the what put them in that position, and that mm. is Bill Algio just looking at T.J. Brown. TJ Brown, he sets sets his hips, he loads them, ready to throw one of these signature bombs. Algio sees it about five minutes before the actual <laughs> shot comes in, <laughs> promptly ducks underneath and comes up with that elbow, Joe. Oh yeah, my man. word, that was phenomenal. A yeah. great slow motion highlight for anyone looking uh, outside the main card who hasn't seen. Go and watch that elbow. It's really beautiful. Yeah, really, really paused, paused him and just like... I mean, TJ Brown thought <laughs> thought he was back home after that elbow. Like that was it was superb from Algio. And then I love his post fight promo, dumping on Kansas City. Your man comes from Philadelphia. They just lost the Super Bowl to Kansas City, hence the beef. Um, now, Tom, they had a title contender fight on the prelims. Brandon Royval defeats Mateus Nicolau with, I mean, okay, I'll we'll go through it. They're sort of circling around each other, hand fighting, lead hand hand fighting. Nikolai sort of like comes in with like a maybe like a left hook, left jab coming round. They end up kind of like parallel to each other, and Roy Val throws a right knee up with a right hand right behind it, gets on top, elbows, raining down on Nikolai. Ref steps in, saves Nikolai, and number one contender for me, Brandon Roy Val. Yeah, big moment for Roy Val. Of course, the the part missing there was Nicolau being fully extended, reaching out to try to find uh, Roy Val with his yes, strike. Sorry. And uh, the chin there was totally exposed, down as he reaches. And, and Roy Val obliged him with a beautiful knee. Uh, you present your chin like that, thanks very much. Mm. Uh, I also love the fact that they were just praising Nicolau basically from the from the beginning. Yeah, uh, and was still mid sentence when Royval landed that knee. Mm. Yeah, I th- I think I think he's been overlooked, Joe. Really, yeah. like every every time we've seen him, he's been really really good and really yeah. re- really exciting. Really really exciting. Nikolai was on a six fight win streak. Royval um, obviously stops that, but it was like Nikolai was was a, a fighter that sort of ramped up the pace, whereas Royval is in your face immediately. Doesn't seem to be too bothered about what's going to happen in the next minute other than what's happening right now and yeah man I think you know Pantoja Moreno has been set Roy Val versus either of those guys oh my lord yeah he, he's oh, right he's lord. right there and he should be fighting for a belt we lamented it before Joe but put these guys on the main card put these yeah, guys if- come what did you which which knee did you prefer, uh, Roy Val's or Barbosa's? Ah, oh, it's for the memories, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stick with Barbosa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But from a let's say top tier perspective, uh, I, I prefer Jonathan. Ma- uh, sorry, Jonathan Martin. I do, I do, Joe. I tell you one problem Brandon Roy, Roy Val has, and that's that. There's a man fighting twenty pounds above him who looks, who looks identical. 
<laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's Jonathan Martinez. Yeah. Um, no, I think Roy Vals has more consequence for the for the division. Yes, that's that's fair to say. That's fair to say. Um, is there anything else we want to talk about from this card? Really, um, Daniel Zellhuber uh, beat Lando Venata. That's his uh, third win in the UFC now. No, is it? No, he's two and one in the UFC, I believe. Yes, two and one. I thought he looked quite good against Venata, but you know, Venata gave him uh, some problems in that second round coming back. Uh, Gaston Balanos versus Aaron Phillips. That was a hilarious fight in bantamweight division. Some hilarious slop. Treat yourself to that. We now are at the stage now where bantamweight's filled out to have the funny meme fighters. So Balanos, all Muay Thai, gets taken down, just wraps up, grapes finds the leg. Holds the head and is looking at the ref going like, "You ain't doing anything, so get me up." Like that's that's what that's his takedown defense. Um, he wins a decision over Aaron Phillips. Really kind of brutalized him. And then Jocelyn Edwards defeats Lucy Lucy Pudjilova in one of the worst decisions I've ever seen. Two of the judges given the first two rounds to Jocelyn Edwards. How? I have no idea. Like honestly, I have. It is beyond me how anyone could have given that fight to her, and yet they did. He yep. did. One for the Patreon there, you breaking down that fight in more detail uh, <laughs> after hours, I think, Joe. I didn't yeah. watch it, I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, don't worry, you've not really missed much. Anyway, listeners, we're going to break down some news here. Now, let's start with the sad news. Charles Oliveira versus Benil Darius is off the next pay-per-view card. It's been pushed back a month due to injury, or because people hate Nunes versus Peña 3 that much that they're going to put that on there not for me to say um yep co-main event no more of Cejudo versus uh, Sterling is it Tom- is it confirmed for the Peña uh Nunes yes it's, yes it has been confirmed for that does that I mean that does change my feelings Joe the really? nation of Canada applauds oh okay <laughs> yes yeah I mean would you make that a five round fight yeah, just to be like yes Yes, I yeah, think I we all, we both feel like that, don't we? Yeah. Like top top five guys. If it's if you're in that tier, then yes, yeah. the USC should have the discretion to make it a five round fight. Now, I will say that has affected the card of UFC 288 a fair bit. Um, you now have Cejudo versus Sterling for the bantamweight title. Jessica Andrade versus Yan Yaonan. Yan Yaonan, sorry, in the co-main. Cron Gracie versus Charles Jourdain. Drew Dober, Matt versus Matt Frivola. Sorry, I'm all over the place here. And Movsar Evloev versus Bryce Mitchell. Now for the main card. You know, two good fights. One interesting one. One sloppy banger in there. You know, we got we got some nice servings there. I'm, um, I'm, I'm looking down that card. I'm seeing Phil, Phil Hall's buried, buried down. Is he? He's fighting a bearded man called Ikram As- Aliskerov, who's 13 oh. and 1. Oh, so, dear. little little morsels in there for us for us fans. Yeah, I mean, it does take the shine off. It's just such a signature fight. Uh, Oliveira, Darius, yes. big fans of both men. And uh, I'm kind of hoping Darius can move forward. He deserves it, Joe. He really deserves it. I was thinking that if, if Oliveira is injured and the fight's cancelled, just make Darius Makachev. Yeah. For October, like I don't know what what are they hoping for? Are they hoping that both these guys are so messed up from this fight that if they do fight Makachev, they're not going to be at one hundred percent for October, or they're just going to make Dustin Poirier versus Makachev? I think there might be some sort of kind of deep state conspiracy going on where <laughs> Darius must not fight for the belt. He doesn't help himself though with those post fight promos. Like I'll fight ten more times before I fight for the belt, and he's just like, "All right, <laughs> like <laughs> bet." <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, it's not 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 the best tactic from him. Now let's talk about a fight that has been confirmed for October. October is April, and we're having to talk about an October fight. Paolo Costa versus Hamza Chimaev in Abu Dhabi. Now, why is this fight happening in Abu Dhabi, Tom? Are we uh, are we going to address that, or are we just going to? Is it just because like these like Costa can't cut weight quickly enough for Chimaev to fight twice this year? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Costa probably needs to start his weight cut now, and that's they're giving him you know six mm. months out. That takes you to October. Uh, it seems to be the cartoonish nature of. Paulo Costa, which I'm yes. all I'm all about it, Joe. I love it. I love this fight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I, th- I think there might be some visa issues traveling <laughs> one of these men, uh, and it's not the Brazilian. No, I think I think there there are some issues with Chimaev that um, 
I think uh, stem back from, from some of his mates. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to get into it too much. We can uh, save that for another day. Or you can just look up the work of uh, Karim Zidane, who is a tremendous journalist who uh, covers this stuff in detail. Uh, but in terms of the fight itself, Awuga, uh, that is all violence all the time. And a hell of a test for Chimaev in the middleweight division. I was kind of of the opinion, just make him versus Adesanya now. Like, just do it right now. But Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a funny one, you know. He burns so bright for such a short period. Yeah. And, he, you know, ultimately his last performance was a great performance. Uh, yeah. He did comprehensively beat Burns. I mean, I know... Kevin and, Holland. Yeah. Well, there you go. That just shows yeah. you... That just shows you where I'm at with the Chimaev hype train, Joe. It's... It's... Uh, it's not, it's so, not chugged in the same way. No, no. 13 months in between fights, it's just too long for this guy to not be fighting. Like, it, it's just, he should be out there fairly regularly, and he's just not going to be. Um, but, you know, I, I think this is a great matchup. It'll be interesting to see physically how it will line up as well, because obviously Costa has the issues with his short arms. You know, he has to have a very hook heavy approach, which will then bring him close into Chimaev. But. We'll have to break that down in closer detail in October. Tom, one more piece of news and then we'll go. John Jones has basically announced his next fight will be his retirement fight. It'll be against Stipe Miocic in Madison Square Garden in November. Dana has pretty much confirmed it. He seemed to want to make this fight for July, but John, I guess he can't be trusted to go back to Vegas just yet, so they're going to do it in MSG. Do you think John Jones can stay clean and safe for seven months? Uh, no, no. We've certainly seen uh, that that's not the case. Mm. Um, just to confirm, Joe, did I just hear the word retirement? Yeah, yeah. Jones even said, how do people want to see for my retirement fight me defeating the heavyweight goat in MSG? That's, that's, not, that's not a hype that I'm, that I'm about, Joe. That's no. deflated me. You can't go into a fight as the champ saying that, oh, I'm going to... I'm going to just go out, take a retirement fight against Stipe Miocic. Not if you're the competitor that we believe John Jones is. Mm. Uh, that's a shame. But, you know, given his inconsistencies in the past, um, I'm not sure that that will m- prove to be the case. Uh, is it just that he doesn't want to fight these big dogs that are coming no, through? he doesn't want to. He wants to have... You know, he had the Cyril Garn fight, which was lined up perfectly for him, despite our prediction. Um... Then he's got Stipe, who's 41, 42 years old, you know, and I expect this to be Stipe's last fight as well. So we're basically going to watch the two guys retire. Um, it's hard to get excited about that, you know what I mean? Like, I like the idea of, like, a guy who's just like, I'm the king, come take it from me, not, I'll do one more and then I'll leave. Like, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit sad, isn't it? Mm. You know, and we're never going to get Jones versus Ngannou now, you know. I think, by the way, if this is his retirement fight and they both retire... I can guarantee you then for December you're going to get Curtis Blades versus someone for the t- title. Maybe a Tom Aspinall. Sorry, Sergei Pavlovich, Curtis Blades, is that happening? That is happening next Saturday. Well, how, how is Blades going to fight for the title? Joe, have you just revealed? <laughs> you just revealed where you stand on that fight? No, uh, have no, Have no, you no. not watched Curtis Blades, Derek Lewis? Have you not learned, Joe? I don't know. I don't think Pavlovich can go that long. You know, Blades went into... Uh, <laughs> Lewis went into a second round. Can Pavlovich go past a minute? <laughs> no, I, I'm not revealing my pick. I actually haven't made a pick yet. I'm just saying Curtis Blades. But, I mean, listen, they're not going to make Pavlovich versus Tom Aspinall for the heavyweight title, are they? Like, they're going to, you know, they want an American in there for that, most likely. Um, anyway, what do you... What, it's, yeah, I don't know, it's a bit of a damp way of announcing it, isn't it? Like, yeah. I guess we'll get hyped for it, but then people will be like, you know, just savour it whilst they're here. And it's just like, what, reduced versions of two very good fighters? Now, let me let me just say, imagine a different timeline and Jones is like, right, I've got one more fight left in me. I'm going to go out. Francis Ngannou, John Jones, confirmed. Yes. Oh, how do you feel about that? My loins would be melting off me. Like, it's, it's, be- incredible. <laughs> it's incredible. So I, I think it doesn't help that it's Miocic. I think you can say I'm gonna, I've got one more left in me, guys, and then I'm done. And I'm going to fight the absolute best, biggest test that we all want to see. Not I'm going to fight a guy who's, who we know, we know is on the back end of his career. Oh, very much so, yeah. yeah. Like Stipe's peak was, what, the 
the end of his peak was probably what the Cormier trilogy. Like that was that was it really. And then since then it's been the loss to Ngannou and then nothing. Mm. You know, Stipe doesn't have to fight. That's the other thing. Like he doesn't have to do this, and he he's clearly told us and told the UFC that he doesn't have to do this. And so he's just going to wait and see. Like, and I think that's fine, and I think that's a really healthy place for someone like that to be in. You know, you don't want Stipe desperate for that fight. You want him to like really just want to do it. Um, but yeah, it's. I mean, you know, I've watched the Garn fight a couple times now. I still, I, I just think Jones looked terrible in that fight. To be honest, like even in victory, it was just a strange, terrible fight. Um, that people fell in love with the narrative of it, but hey ho, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just to just to say where I lie on Stipe Miocic's peak. It's actually prior to the Cormier trilogy. It's the it's the win over Ngannou, defending the belt, oh. weathering that first round, and and showing you know what, yeah. what a real champ is about. Yeah, the JDS win, the Ngannou win. That's the peak of his peak, and then Cormier was the end of it. Really, like that was, you know, it's it's hard for a guy to get knocked out like that, and then have that scrappy win in the second one, and then the dominant win in the third against a very much reduced Daniel Cormier. You know, for me to really think that this is a guy at the peak of his powers. But anyway, that's litigation for another time. Listeners, thank you so much for joining us. We will not be talking about Shane Burgos's loss in the PFL this weekend because that was too depressing and I don't want to discuss it. Um, even more so than Arnold Allen's loss. Uh, but listeners, thank you so much for joining us. You can contact us at holdonbrother69 at gmail.com. Tom, what do you have to say? Yeah, keep reaching out, guys. Lovely to, to hear from you in the in the comments. Uh, mm. Feel free to give Joe a light rinsing. Uh, he doesn't. He, he wants to disown what he said about Max prior to the fight, and <laughs> and the fact that Arnold will beat uh, Volkanovski. We haven't mentioned it now. I still stand by that. It's a, yeah, it's a sensitive subject. So light, light rinsing. <laughs> I, we we welcome it. He needs it. Fair enough. Uh, yeah, listeners, thank you so much. We will be back some point this week to talk about Curtis Blades versus Sergey Pavlovich. I mean, that fight goes. One of two ways, isn't it? Like, there's there's not much variety in how that fight's going to go, but I can't wait to talk about it with you, Tom, and the rest of that card, which has got some sneaky bangers, and we love a sneaky banger on this pod. Um, so, yeah, listeners, we'll be back later this week. And you have a nice afternoon, evening, whatever time of day you're listening. Bye, Bye. everybody. Bye-bye. And uh, have a good time.